So we're looking at how to get values from form submission using the Go programming language and a user using your website submits a form, that data gets sent to the server. The method by which they submit that form, the method on that form can either be post or get. If it's post, the data is going to be submitted with the form body, the body of the, the request. If the method is get, the data is going to be submitted through the URL. We're going to see that in action, see how to process it. And we're using form value. So form value is a method which is attached to, a, to any value of type HTTP request. So any value of type pointer to request from the HTTP package right, has the method form value attached to it. So uh, we saw that with getting a value from the URL. Here we have a very basic form. And the method on that is post. And we have an input type text, which when you look at like forms in HTML, often people will have like, you know, name and ID is equal to Q, right? The ID is for targeting this DOM element when you're working with CSS or JavaScript and HTML all together. Use the ID for like your CSS to say, target this form element and make it this way or for your JavaScript to target that form element. That's what the ID attribute is for. The name attribute is like for giving the variable a name. And so here we're, we're giving the variable a name, and the name is Q, and a value will be stored in that variable or assigned to that identifier, right? And so that's what the name is, and that's what ID is. And not everybody knows that. Like how many people already knew that. Let me see your hands. The difference between name and ID attributes in forms and form elements. No? Yeah, so good to know, right? And it makes sense when you hear it that name is the variable name where the value is going to be stored. And ID is if I want to identify that element on the page and do something with it with CSS or JavaScript, I use ID to identify it. The name is for the variable name where I store the value that's stored, submitted in there. A lot of people are like, I don't know the difference between name and ID, so I just include them both and make them the same, and it all works, <laughs> which it does, right? But, you know, it's good to know the difference. So, uh, so there's our little form, and let's just run this and watch this work. So Control-C, and then go up a level. And didn't I just... Bam, there we go. And go run main. And so when I come to localhost... I have my little form and I can put in happy, happy, happy. Okay, and submit it. And it sent that to the server. The server grabbed it and rendered a page back to the client, sent a page back to the client, and included what was submitted. Isn't that cool? And so the way that worked in the code was we have this anything that comes in at the default route gets handled by foo. And I should call this the default path. You can call that the path. And request form value, if that is there, it, uh, it gets the value assigned to the identifier Q. Well, this is the identifier Q that we're asking for there. And it assigns it that. If there's no value there, it gives it an empty string. So V gets an empty string if there's no value there. And then we do the, the response writer header, we set it, and we give content type of this. And then we write back to our response writer this text and we concatenate to it V, right? Which, if it's an empty string, nothing shows. And so that's a nice little program, right? Nice little program. You guys are coding away. All this code is there on GitHub. So let's go through it, and then you can get your hands dirty doing an example. So here's the next one. And let's look at the difference between these two files. I'm just going to click between them. And what's the difference? What difference do you see? I mean, aside from the fact that let's just highlight the same line there. What difference do you see in these files? The method is post versus get, right? So when we run the third one, control C, what are you going to see different? Is the program going to function any different? I mean, in terms of the results? What's going to happen when I hit submit? Right? Because the method was git. So it stuck all the values in the URL. Do you see that? 
And form value grabs the, U, the values from either the URL or the form. Isn't that cool? So that time we sent the, the values through the URL, and that's method get. Right here, it sends the values through the URL. Post sent it through the body, and you didn't see them. So that's just showing that difference. And then the next example here is we have templates. And so our templates have uh, index.gohtml, and we have a header template and a footer template. These are includes. Have you guys seen includes with templates before? I don't know if you have. Might be the first time you're seeing that. And so here's just a file. It could be named anything. And up here I say define footer. And I define that footer. And that becomes a template I have access to. So here I could say, all right, put in template footer. And over here I could say define header. And so right here I could say put in template header. So this puts this stuff right there at the top. And it puts this stuff right here at the bottom, right? Top and bottom of my page, header and footer. So that's kind of a convenient way if you want to have the same site header across your entire site. You know, the same look, the same buttons. Make a header and just include it at the top of each of your pages. Kind of cool, right? And then here I have a form, and I have some IDs here. Maybe because I have CSS, I don't I have no idea why I have IDs. Oh, because the label. See, inside the HTML, label needs to target this element, and so we're targeting that with an ID. But here, the variable is named first. So when this form gets more submitted, I'm going to use form value to look for first, to look for last, and also to look for subscribe. And so in my Go code, right, this is the route, foo, and it runs this, and I have a fav icon, not found handler, and then foo runs, and it looks, is there a first, is there a last, is there a subscribe, and is it equal to on? So this little code right there runs, evaluates to a bool, and, uh, and then it's assigned to s. And then I create a, a, a composite literal using type person, and then curly braces, that's a composite literal, you give it the type, and then you give it the curly braces, and you put the values in between the curly braces. So I'm just doing a composite literal there, and it's an anonymous struct. So I'm not like assigning that to a variable, I'm just saying here's the value. I can just give it the value, like I could put 14 in there. I could just put in a value. It doesn't have to be assigned to a, an identifier or variable. And so I just put the value in there. The value is of type person with those fields, with those values in it. And, uh, and then I pass that into my template, index.gohtml. And so in index.gohtml, if those, if those values are, uh, have more than an empty string, it'll print them out. They're either empty string or nothing. So those values are always there. They're either empty string or nothing. And so I could go fill this out. Make sure I'm recording, cool. First name, last name, subscribe, false, copyright McLeod, all right? James Bond subscribed. All right, so I was able to submit a form, grab the values, do something with them. Anybody have questions about that. So let's just look at the rest of the examples and you could build a form. So here's a form file and ink type. We'll look at that in the next video. This was enough for this video. So I want you to now go on to GitHub and you'll go to GitHub, goes to 11, is the username, and Golang Web Dev is the repo. <laughs> and uh, look up that code for 027, 04, if you need to reference the code, 04. And I want you to create a little Go application which serves up a form 
allows the user to submit the form, and when the data comes in, use form value, request dot form value to grab the values and do something with them. And we'll take 15 minutes to do this till 8.05, okay? And if you don't do it, I will fail you. No pressure. <laughs>